Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Noir Syndrome. This is a... Well, it's a new game available on Steam. $7, uh, $6 for its opening week sale. And it's a difficult game to describe. Difficult game to describe would actually be a great piece of dialogue for it because it does have kind of that pulpy, you know, film noir type thing going on. It is a side-scrolling adventure game where you play as a detective and basically there's been a murder you have to go throughout your town trying to solve the murder so that's simple enough kind of a cool concept don't see that very often in games but where the hook really is here is that the cases the suspects stuff like that uh, are always procedurally generated uh, there's always a killer and there's always like the same set of buildings but it's not like there's episodic content where it's exactly the same every single time it's procedurally generated so you can play it through multiple times and every time it's gonna be different this has benefits replayability, but also negatives, you know, it's a little bit more diluted as opposed to being focused like something like The Wolf Among Us might be, not that that's necessarily a great comparison considering this is made by, you know, one dude. In any case, it's available on Steam now, we're gonna talk about positives and negatives as we get started here. So, when you start, you start in this uh, version of your apartment. We can choose to either play with the uh, mouse or with just the keyboard, but I'm going to play with both of them, um, just so you can kind of get a visual indicator of what I'm actually doing here with my, um, you know, magnifying glass. So the way the gameplay in the game actually works is pretty simplistic. Uh, I won't show you the world map just yet, but basically whenever you're in an environment, you walk around and you can click on things, and uh, by clicking on things... Does the click actually work? Maybe I do have to use the keyboard here. Um, by uh, investigating things, essentially, which is what I'm doing right now with my keyboard, um, you can get some information. Some of this is just flavor text, like a mess of unsolved cases, and some of it uh, will actually give you clues that will help you complete the case. Sometimes you'll actually get money or tools, though. I assume we'll get money or tools for investigating our bookcase. No? Oh, uh, there we go. We got money for investigating our bed. Money's important because there is kind of a rudimentary, like, energy system in the game. Every time you take an action, it costs you energy, and uh, you need to eat, basically, to get your energy back up. Kind of a weird way to gate things or, like, limit things, but it, it works, and it means that you can't just simply, you know, investigate absolutely everything without, have to worry, uh, without having to worry about stuff. So, when you first get started, you have 14 days, or 13 days once you leave your house, and this is the map of your town, so... You have, I don't know, somewhere in the vicinity of like 15 or 20 buildings. Each building you go into will have people, it'll have clues, it'll have money, it might have vendors and stuff like that. But some of the buildings are um, better than others, or some of them are more pressing than others. So we will probably choose to go to the subway because it has this dot over it, and if we click on it, that means we can see what that dot represents. Here it says there's a crime scene, so this is where our murder took place. We could also go someplace else if we wanted to, uh, but generally speaking... The game kind of looks, or kind of works a little bit like those old Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego games where you like, you know, go to the first suggested crime scene or first suggested option and then someone there will be like, hey, there's something fishy going on, you know, down at the speakeasy and then when you head over there, um, you just kind of follow a chain of clues and that makes it most likely that you'll finish uh, the, the quest properly and actually end up arresting the right person. So we do have um, clues, that's basically what we're trying to generate. We'll eventually get suspects here, we can also see our bullets, uh, lockpicks. Uh, our money, which is important to buy tools, and uh, our, how, we, how we're feeling, which is related to our hunger. Clues are important, we'll find them. Um, they give us one piece of information about whoever the actual killer is, but it's an incomplete piece of information. So we might find uh, male fingerprints, and then we know that this is owned by a male. So that means that all female townspeople are ruled out. And maybe we'll find, like, uh, Iron Button. This is owned by a civilian or mobster. So it's not owned by the police, for example. So basically, you just slowly eliminate one category of people at a time, and eventually there's only one suspect left that fits all the criteria. We'll also see um, what their, their hobbies and professions are as we get moving along here. Anyway, let's actually do something here. So I'll move, uh, and one thing I will say is kind of annoying might not be the right word. We yeah, found a shoe padding there, but um, is that... It's never clear... Oh, so we have a dancer or a driver is our suspect. I, if it just said dancer, it would be far too easy. But because it has two of them, it means you can't necessarily be 100% confident until you get uh, another piece of corroborating information. But anyway, um, it's never necessarily 100% indicated where clues will be, which is good because... No, we found a bullet casing there too. We'll look at that in a second. It's good because it means you don't know... You, you can't just make a beeline for the same place every single time, right? Um, but it's also a little bit bad. This is the scope of the area, as you can see. Uh, it's a little bit bad because I find myself just kind of like walking and then every few seconds I just like press Z on my keyboard, press Z on my keyboard, and it's just like walk, 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 Z, walk, 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 Z, walk, 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 Z. And oftentimes I'm like 
I keep finding these clues, but I don't really know why I'm finding them or where I'm finding them. But maybe that's just me not paying close enough attention. So, we know from that bullet casing, uh, their hobby is going to be a dancer or a driver. And their profession is going to be policeman or mobster. So if we can find, like, a police dancer or a, a mobster dancer or a police driver or a mobster driver, that would probably make it pretty likely that, um, we would actually be able to, uh, solve the crime pretty quickly here. So we have two options here that I can see. We can either go to the crime scene where someone else got murdered. Townspeople will get murdered as time goes on. It's kind of like a serial killer type thing. Or we can go to a public gathering. But let's go to the public gathering because I want to meet people. I want to get some suspects. So let's, um, press some uh, Z keys here and see if we can find anything. All right. The hideout sounds fishy. Virginia Baker says the hideout is in need of a thorough investigation. So this tells us maybe where we want to go next to find more clues. This is a vendor who's selling something. Selling a fresh apple for $2. Maybe later we'll consider picking that up. Um, Charles Wilson added a suspect because Margaret Johnson said, I would keep my eyes on Charles Wilson if I were you. So now that we have a suspect, we can look into our um, case here and see that Charles Wilson is a driver, but he's a civilian driver. So he's not likely or not possible to be the killer. All right. Good to know. Um, let's just keep searching these to see if we find something. The odor is overwhelming. Have I already talked to you? Where are you going? There we go. Okay, it is, uh, that was the same person. Selling a mango for $5? No, that's okay. When I get hungry, I'll try to eat something. Selling a package of beef jerky for $10. Donald Jackson added to suspects. Rumor has it Donald Jackson has been up with some shady business. Uh, and now I do feel hungry, so I probably will buy something when I leave. Donald Jackson is an artist, which makes him very, very unlikely, if not impossible, to be our killer. Okay. Richard Johnson added to suspects. I fear for my life when Richard Johnson walks free. Jesus. That is pretty horrifying. What about Richard Johnson? He is another artist. How does this town sustain itself exclusively on art? I don't know, but uh, we found an overcoat. This is just another clue. Basically, there's two kinds of information that you can get. You can get information about people by talking to people or information about the case and who the killer actually is by finding those clues kind of in the environment. Um, so the overcoat means it's police or mobster. So that's a redundant piece of information that actually doesn't help us out in this situation. So I think by now, police zone here, something's fishy here. That's where we want to go. By now, you're probably getting a pretty good feel for the uh, basic gameplay of Noir Syndrome. I have a lot of things that I like about this game. I think it's a super cool concept for like a detective game to be procedurally generated. That's really neat that it, it could be kind of like a procedurally generated gunpoint or something like that, right? Um, without the puzzle elements, of course. More like narrative or, you know, adventure focused. Barbara Johnson added to suspects. We don't know that it's a male yet, so it actually could be Barbara Johnson. Um, oh, it's another artist. My god. That has not happened to me before. Let's see if we can break into this room and maybe get some investigation done in here. I do have lockpicks. Good, we can open this up. Do we have any tools? No. We have some journal entries, which I'm not really reading, but uh, maybe this trash can has something? No. And uh, the bed has $13, so I will be able to buy some food at the diner um, next time we go through that, but uh, cool. Um, what I, I have a lot of things I like about this game. That's where I was leaving off in that kind of tangent there. Overall, I do think the kind of experience comes across as a little bit thin. I've played the game co to completion each each uh, case that you solve might only take 10, 15 minutes, depending on how much, you know, detail you go into. There's a mob takeover? Sure, we'll check it out. Um, and there is some differential stuff that happens every time that is different, but overall the experience feels pretty samey, and it does feel a little bit like playing an edutainment game from, like, the 90s, which is cool. I loved those games. But once you kind of get the process down for how to solve a case, it seems really, really easy to just kind of repeat it. So, let's talk to some people and see if I can put my money where my mouth is here. The hotel sounds fishy. Okay, so we know where to go next. We found two lockpicks, important to help us um, maybe get to a suspect in some situations. And then we just search everything, and whenever we buy food, we head to the, um, we head to the diner or like a market or something. Um, nothing in these, nothing in these, nothing in these. Do we really want to use our lockpicks to open this up? Uh, we can. Let's do it. Um, and we found $14, which will allow us to buy more lockpicks. This, these people really hate Barbara Johnson. Alright, well that wasn't worth going in there, so we're gonna go to the hotel next. Admittedly, clues have been a little bit, uh, spotty so far, nothing truly amazing. But, in all of my, um, games so far, except for the first one where I basically died of hunger, uh, I have solved the case every single time, so I don't want to break my track record. We'll head to the hotel, we've still got plenty of time left. When we start to feel starved, we'll buy some more food. Everyone hates Barbara Johnson. Okay, Shirley Harris added to suspects. This town is very gossipy. Shirley Harris is a chef. Seems unlikely. Um, let's keep moving along here. I don't think, by the way, 
thick rope found. I don't think there's any false positives. Like, I don't think you would ever find something that was like, well, it's a driver or a dancer, and then you're like, oh, just kidding, that was a piece of false evidence. That would add some, you know, an interesting level to things, but might also make things super fucking annoying and unpredictable, which would be uh, maybe the kiss of death for, for a game like this. So just searching through the chairs here. What do you have? Selling a mixed drink for $10? Not interested right now. You feel starved. Let's see if there's maybe some food upstairs. All right. Great music here. What do you got? Selling a white wine for $12? I bought it, and it satisfied me for at least a little while, so we can get more food later. Rose Moore added a suspect. Suspects, have you spoke to Rose Moore yet? Let's see. Rose Moore is a poet. Man, it has taken me forever. I actually solved a, a quest, or solved a, um, one of the, the missions. Remember, the cases are basically the same every single time. Um, like, they're procedurally generated, but it's always, like, the same kind of formula for the case. There's always a killer who's, like, into Egyptian mythology. Um, I would love to buy that seared steak, but I can't afford it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I solved it in, like, two days. So, this one is taking a little bit longer. Virginia Baker is a chef. Does nobody do, you know, primary resource production or gathering in this town? This is crazy. It's like San Francisco. Alright, we're gonna go up, and uh, then we're gonna go up a little bit further, unless there actually could be something on this balcony. Eh, there's nine dollars, alright. Now, there is some kind of interesting stuff. I am gonna break in here. Um, there is some kind of interesting stuff that happens in the game. Um, like, you can accidentally commit crimes, or on purpose you can commit crimes. Like, I robbed a bank, basically just kind of hitting the Z key crazily, and people were like, people witnessed my crime, so I had the option to basically kill them and get away with it scot-free, or, uh, the, you know, the police might start looking for me if I left them alive, so I killed them, but that stuff, it, it doesn't seem to factor in all that much unless you want it to. Now, hey, selling a cheese platter for $23. This is an extraordinarily expensive place to, to be here. Um, I don't know if I want to use absolutely all of my lockpicks to break into every single one of these rooms. That seems like kind of risky, but at the same time, you know, here we are. Oh, we don't actually have any lockpicks left, so we're gonna leave. Didn't actually get any leads there, but we did get some more suspects. We're gonna go to some place with cheaper food, because otherwise I will probably find myself dead pretty soon. So we're gonna go to the diner. And at this point, we basically still need to discover some new suspects. Otherwise, like, we don't have anybody that fits the bill for the fairly decent amount of information we have so far. So we're gonna go to the diner. You can usually get a pot roast for like 15 bucks here, which we definitely have money for. The department store sounds fishy, so we know where to go. Ham and cheese sandwich, pot roast. Okay, so we'll get that. I feel normal. I would, re oh, I found a heavy key ring. Again, just kind of like mashing the Z key here, as you can see by that button on the bottom right. Um, all right, so the heavy key ring tells us it is uh, police or mobster. So we know now that it has to be mobster. We, we actually knew that with a thick rope as well. It has to be a mobster, dancer, or driver. The only mobster we know right now is Shirley Harris. Shirley Harris is a poet? No, she's a chef. So it can't be Shirley Harris. So we still haven't discovered the suspect yet. I'm going to buy a ham and cheese sandwich. There we go. Uh, ham and cheese plate, I should say, which leaves me feeling full, which is better than feeling normal. So, luckily at the bank now there is a mob takeover, which means we should be able to meet some uh, new mob members here. Hopefully. Now, let's see if we get some suspects. The sewers sound fishy, okay. Um, let's see if we can talk to some more people. I don't want to leave. No, I don't want to leave, I want to talk to you, but uh, I can't open this because I don't have any lock picks. Usually you can buy lock picks in the sewer, I think, so, you know, naturally, uh, maybe we should head to the sewer, but maybe we'll get some important information right here. Oh, Shirley Harris, come back when you have some real evidence on me. No, Shirley Harris, you're fine, I just, I need more. Shirley Harris has been murdered, you should have been a little bit more, um, you know, cooperative, I guess, in your investigation here, in our investigation. So we should buy some lockpicks down here, um, and this is also where things were fishy, so we might as well look down here. I just want to take some time to get some information. We got some money, selling a lockpick. Let's purchase as many as we can. I don't think we'll need more money in the future. All right, so $7 found just by opening the door, and another $14 found. Well, what the heck was fishy down here? It seems like it's actually pretty okay. We may not be able to solve this case. I haven't discovered anybody. Five days left. What's going on here? Crime scene at the diner. Let's check it out. I was just there. Maybe we'll get lucky. Casual attire found. Okay. Oh, female fingerprints. Lock pick. Okay, they didn't do a very sweeping or good job uh, getting it here, did we? It's got to be a female mobster, dancer, or driver. 
Is, is it possible that we've got some kind of meta thing going on here where, where Charles is actually the name of a woman in this case? Otherwise, we have two more sus or three more suspects to possibly find, and one of them has to be the one for us. This is actually proving to be a more engaging case than any of the ones I had off camera, which is great for the game. I feel normal. Betty King has been murdered. I didn't even know who that was. Okay, public gathering gives me plenty of time to talk to people, maybe learn um, more suspect names. My lawyer will handle any accusations you have. Don't be a dick about it. Tidy lounge for waiting guests. Keep your eyes on Richard Johnson. I know it's a female, but I can't tell you that. Um, please give me more suspects. I'm not sure if it's the same people in each environment every- Oh, the old tower sounds fishy. I'm not sure if it's the same people every time. If it is, then, um... Like, in each building the same time. Then if it is, then I'm botching this miserably and, uh... I apologize. I wonder if there's more money out here. People always leaving money on the, the balcony. Thank you very much. Uh, plenty of uh, money, but I don't think I want to use all, or sorry, plenty of lockpicks, but I don't want to use my lockpicks exclusively to go through this hotel. Hmm. So the old tower sounds fishy, but I haven't actually discovered all of our suspects yet, so I almost want to go someplace new and maybe get lucky. Um, but we haven't been to the old tower yet, so maybe we'll, we'll get lucky there and find some new suspects. Okay, please talk to me. I am not the killer. That's exactly what the killer would say. Virginia, please move. I'd like to get up the door there. There are some weird, you know, interface issues like this from the fact that it's a side-scroller. It, it mostly works, though. Business card found. Okay, that should tell us profession, maybe. Um, civilian or mobster. Okay, so we know it's, t it's a female mobster, dancer, or driver. Uh, okay, talk to this person. Eight, ten dollars found. Please give me some information. Tell me about someone I didn't know. The mechanic shop sounds fishy, okay? Mind your own business. Another little bit of money found. We'll use another lockpick here. What do you got for me? What do you got for me? Selling a bullet. Alright. Found fourteen dollars again. I also wish there was kind of like a fast travel out of a building option because I find myself just like walking back and forth here over and over and over. Um, Despite the fact that this is going a little bit differently than all of my games so far, uh, and I'm having a lot more trouble actually getting a, a beat on a suspect, I still think that the replayability here is fairly low relative to some other procedurally generated games. Because once, once you get that formula down, it really feels like it just works. But it's not working for me right now, so maybe um, I'm full of shit. But I really can't see myself spending, you know, a hundred hours playing this. Which is not necessarily the measure of a good game, obviously. But just to give people, you know, expectations um, properly. We're almost out of time here. Barbara Lewis added to suspects. Please, God. Barbara Lewis is a dancer. She is a civilian dancer. Am I correct? Oh, sorry. No, Barbara, that's Barbara Johnson. Barbara Lewis is a mobster dancer. She is a mobster dancer. Okay, so we actually did find the right person here. Perseverance has paid off. So now we can uh, basically, you know, finger her here. Don't laugh at that. That's an okay thing to say. And then, um, we'll go back to our map, and it should tell us where she is, and hopefully we'll be able to take her in peacefully and actually finish our case here. Let me, okay, we'll leave. And we only have one day left, so this is important. Our culprit was spotted right where we just were, so we'll go back here. And there she is. Don't shoot me. Press the Z key. Barbara Lewis, you're under arrest. All right. So we actually did manage to complete it there. Um, case closed. The suspect was arrested successfully. The law will take it away from here. And the culprit was correct, so I didn't uh, arrest the wrong person. So that's a, a fairly representative case, I guess, now that I actually solved it, of, of uh, how things work in Noir Syndrome. Uh, overall, I have mixed impressions. I think it's a super cool concept, and the first time I played through it, I was like, you know, I can get down with this, like, Venn diagram and, like, you know, logically excluding groups of people until only there's one person that can, that they can be the only person that can actually complete the crime. That being said, the reason the game suffers a little bit is because of that predictability and the fact that, you know, it's methodical. As long as you're methodical about it, you can usually end up uh, solving the case. And if you can't, it's usually not due to your error, it's due to just not being able to find the uh, people that can actually illuminate who the actual other townspeople that you haven't noticed yet are, I guess. Um, that being said, I still think it's a decent effort. It is uh, fairly cheap, so uh, 6 to $7 on Steam, depending on when you purchase it. And I think this is the, could be the kind of thing that you could maybe get, you know, an hour, two hours of uh, interesting gameplay out of. It's not going to be for everybody. Super cool concept, though. 
Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, if you want to pick up the game on Steam, there will be a, a link in the video description below to do that. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.